Okay, so just to get started, um, my name is Hannah Meineke and I am the curriculum manager for this new series with BOSIF, which is called Our Storyscape. Um, it is an EFL curriculum designed specifically for Spanish speakers. Um, and joining me tonight is Lorena Ojeda, who is the Director of Communications for Latin America. So we are aiming to market this series towards Latin American teachers, but we also think that this series would be quite useful for any teachers in the US or Canada who have, um, you know, a number of uh, Spanish speaking English students in their own classrooms. Um, so before we get started, we have, um, I would just like to note, like if you have any specific needs in your classroom, um, or you have any questions that, about the series, just like put it in the chat, or you can, since we don't have too many speakers, you could just, um, you know, or too many participants tonight, you can just speak in the, in the chat, you know, unmute yourself and ask a question, and we're more than happy to help you out. Um, so let's move on to um, the outline for tonight's webinar and Lorena can tell you a little bit about what we're going to cover. Okay, thank you, Hannah. So today we'll cover a couple of interesting aspects that are part of our storyscape. First of all, we're going to talk about captivating stories with audio and illustrations that bring stories to life. We're going to feature some of our stories and we're going to discuss some of the teaching tools that uh, a storytelling approach can help, you know, can be very helpful for teachers to use for their students, especially when they're helping them build proficiency. So we're going to discuss that. Then we're going to move on to the CI activities that help students um, you know, engage and covers all modes of communication. We're going to show you guys different activities that are part of that go along with stories and that are like inspired in the stories, but in a very, um, let's say, but they are carefully designed to meet different communicative needs. Um, then we're going to move on to our authentic material sections, which includes panoramas, infographics, interviews, videos. Um, and we're also going to talk about our um, story-based projects that include the topic of STEAM and mindfulness, and you will discover other features. Then we'll move on to our assessment section, which includes assessment of individual as well as integrated skills. And finally, we're going to talk about the different platform tools that you will be able to use in order to help your students uh, in how you're going to use them and the special features that we have for teachers and students to have a different learning experience. Awesome. So let's move on to the next section to, you know, what is the basis of our storyscape? So we saw in um, our, you know, most popular um, Voces titles, the CI series, which is the Our Story, Nuestra Storia, and Notre Histoire, and of course, our German and Italian series that focus on comprehensible input using stories. Um, and our current ESL offerings include a few stories, but it's not the main focus of the series, like it is in our story series. So um, when we were designing this curriculum, we had the our story uh, model in mind, although there are a few differences. Um, so within our storyscape, um, each unit features five different stories that will present the vocabulary and grammar um, necessary for students to communicate. Um, and in an authentic and engaging way, um, these stories include uh, native speaker narrations and uh, illustrations in addition to that. Um, there are, I think we'll talk about that in a little bit, um, the uh, pre-reading activities and how storytelling is really beneficial in the classroom and how you can use it to the best of your ability. Um, if you're someone who has done the more traditional route, 
we do include a few um, sections on grammar and traditional vocabulary lists, um, but the stories remain the main focus and the best way to introduce new grammar topics and new modes of communication for our learners. Yeah, yeah. on that note, in, in terms of um, the, in, let's say, the effect of storytelling in language acquisition, there is research that shows that storytelling can be a great teaching tool because by listening to stories, we can, re we can get students' attention and hold their attention um, as some of them may feel identified with either the events or the characters are a part of those stories. And it's a way to lower the affective filter so students can acquire um, the different types of you know, knowledge, expressions that are contextualized. And that helps a lot to build proficiency because they will see the different expressions uh, used in a specific context. So these are some of the reasons why we have uh, been focusing on stories in this particular series. Awesome. Um, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about is the comprehension activities that come afterwards. So much like in the Our Story series from Vosas, we have um, a series of activities for students to complete after reading the stories. So you can complete these as a class or assign them as homework. Um, and there's a variety of different um, modes of communication that we focus on when uh, designing these activities. So you'll see there's the recording activities um, that might ask students to either describe in you know, the presentational mode of communication, or we um, might have students uh, listen to a native speaker and respond back verbally um, in an interpersonal mode of communication. Um, there's also, you know, uh, fill in the blank, multiple choice, um, the most basic um, forms of comprehension questions that will like ease students into um, understanding what they've read. Um, and it goes more into, you know, those speaking and writing productive um, language production. Um, as we near the end of the activities. Yeah, I will um, also like, to, sorry. Oh no, keep going. I didn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that I would like to include is the macro level and the micro level, because the macro level of storytelling includes different types of sections that in which students have to follow the sequence in the story. So based on that, uh, they will have to um, organize the sequence in different ways. So this is a way to assess the macro level, meaning the structure of the story. And the micro level is the specific language functions or the specific language features, you know, and expressions that they would have to work with. Um, so another key um, part of our storyscape is the culture aspect. So each unit focuses on a different country or a set of countries um, in the English speaking world. Um, so for example, the second unit is about Canada. These two images you see here in this unit focus on the United Kingdom and Great Britain. Personally, I always get those confused, which countries are part of which. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, <laughs> um, so we include, there's always a map um, because especially in the US, um, geography is such an overlooked um, subject of study. Um, so we just really wanna get students, you know, visualizing, you know, where are people speaking this? Where does language come from? who is speaking it and how do they use the language that, you know, that they are born speaking almost. Um, and we include each, uh, each section here includes fun facts, but we have a lot of the other um, authentic materials that you'll see present in the Our Story series, such as the interviews, the panoramas, um, 
Um, uh, there's something else. In the that you're really <laughs> yes, I you have the, the <laughs> maps, panoramas, interview sections. Yes, the great thing about it is also giving students a real sense of how um, this type of material is used uh, in a communicative way. So uh, finding out about the, the, the country's information, it's what we also call um, content-based learning. So students are acquire, acquiring knowledge from a specific science, in this case, geography and culture, by means of the target, target language, which is English. Mm -hmm. I remember the section I was forgetting. It's the authentic material section, um, <laughs> which is right here. Um, <laughs> so we include, um, within each unit, we include um, a variety of authentic materials related back to the target culture, um, so you'll see in this slide an example of the native speaker interviews, but also a few other things. Um, for example, here's an advertisement for an app, um, a YouTube video instructing, instructing uh, native speakers how to make a certain recipe, and then also an informative video about um, um, statistics of school children around the world. So um, we try to, you know, collect uh, just a variety of relevant materials for your students to learn from. So they not only learn the language, but they learn the culture and they learn, um, they get to experience uh, materials that are meant for that native speaker audience. So that it's a more um, authentic way to uh, experience the language. Yeah, I think it also helps to see how um, you can relate to those types of contents in terms of like making cultural comparisons as to uh, whether we cook uh, things the same in our culture, whether we have the same types of ingredients, because sometimes it's kind of hard to find those kind of ingredients and how we can replace them. We can also discuss on what it is a school day um, in, you know, in different parts of the world and compare and contrast them and also find um, similarities and differences. So there are really many, many ways in which you can take advantage of these authentic materials because you have so many different layers of, you know, cultural content uh, you can develop with your students and also develop um, intercultural competence by means of these authentic materials. So it's a great opportunity for that. Mm -hmm. um, so another thing that we have available in this series um, that um, really sets our storyscape apart from the other titles that you might have seen is the story-based projects, which were written um, and designed by Lorena Ojeda. So um, would you like to explain them a little more in depth, um, you know, what these yeah. projects entail? Sure. So we were talking about how important it is or how powerful storytelling is for teaching purposes. So other ways in which you can get students, um, let's say, inspired by different stories is by also investigating or extending those activities into projects. So the two activities that you see here, for example, the first one that you see on the left is you will see a tortoise, you will see a rabbit, and you will see different types of uh, things there. So this is um, a project based on the story called Mr. Mr. Hare has a date. Mr. Right? Tortoise has a date, oh, I think. Mr. Tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, a, it's an intertextual um, story based on all the classic that you guys probably already know. And, uh, but it's a, it's a very interesting story, I would say, because when I first read it, I was so excited to, you know, build a project based off of that story um, because there we can measure uh, distance and uh, we can help our students uh, realize what happens but not just logically uh, using science to justify the results. 
right? So here we talk about the concept of speed. We calculate speed. We also talk about acceleration. Um, we also um, build a project in which students have to make a ramp, use that ramp have two balls, one one color, the other a different color, maybe one can be green, another one can be brown, representing uh, the two animals in the story, and then play with the different variables that are like this type of surface, the how, you know, the ball is, inclination of the ramp, and measure um, speed based on those um, variables, and also measure their own speed. They can, you know, have uh, in the classroom, like have, you know, some tape with maybe two, three meters long and then run and have a timer and have fun. These are also, this is a way to, you know, take your students off of their devices, off of their, you know, notebooks and have a different way to experience learning, but at the same time, learning English in a meaningful way. Um, the second project that you see on the right is uh, on the water cycle. Um, this is it's also inspired on a story that talks about a rainy day. So here we are talking about the science behind rain and discovering the different um, cycles, the uh, water cycles, but by making also uh, you know a simulation or doing that type of simulation uh, on an experiment and using a cup, hot water, uh, food coloring um, and other objects so we can test <laughs> in a way um, how um, evaporation, condensation, um, collection, all those um, different types happens and how your students can identify each part of the cycle. Um, we also have observation sheets for them to compare. We also here include like um, the different labels and they have to match them based on that. So we also are um, looking at uh, observation, interpretation of graphics and experimentation. So we hope that those uh, projects are useful for you. And of course we have more based on mindfulness that also are projects that help students uh, build and make that moment, take that moment, you know, to relax and oxygenate their brain. So we hope you enjoy this project. <laughs> yes. Uh, they're all quite wonderful. And there's also some, some projects that encourage students to um, express themselves through art, you know, um, so not just the science part of it, um, as you said. Um, uh, so the next thing that we have that um, is can be quite different, especially from our ESL series at Bosa's, um, is the integrated performance assessment. So you'll find that present in the R story series. Um, it's just a different way to assess student skills all at once. So students will be given a context. So in this one on the left, the context is you want to make, you know, your friend is having a birthday and you want to make them um, a dessert or a cake or something. So you, so that's the context for the students. And then three separate steps, they will complete tasks using the language they've learned in, in the unit um, to you know, follow the recipe. So that's a reading comprehension um, and listening comprehension if it's in a video form. And then they'll need to um, talk with their friend about the recipe, what she, um, so like, you know, the friend might say, I don't like chocolate. And so you'll have to, what would you like in the cake? So a back and forth between yourself and the friend, depending. Um, and then finally a presentational sort of reflection at the end, how did it go? Um, what did you make? Can you tell someone else how to make the cake? So it's one context using all sorts of different communication styles speaking, listening, reading, um, but also the different styles of that, which are interpretive. So interpretive reading and listening, interpersonal speaking or writing in between two people, and then presentational speaking or writing, which is um, presenting an idea to a group of people potentially. 
Um, so those are present at the end of each unit, um, connects back to the themes um, and the core vocabulary of that unit and gives some students a chance to flex their skills in a context that they could see themselves needing to use in, in real life. Oh, you know, I do have a friend and I do like baking or, or I would like to travel one day. So let's, you know, figure out how to plan a trip and talk to a travel agent. Um, so we try to think of some sort of real life context that students can use and connect to. And then you can evaluate their skills based off of something real rather than something that's a little bit more basic. Um, so Lorena, did you have anything to add to uh, the IPA assessment? Yeah, um, I think compared to traditional, which of course we do have because we also want to assess uh, individual or specific grammar items and expressions, but I do think um, the integrated performance assessment is a great way to uh, assess um, communicative competence because we are looking at different modes of communication. So how effective that interaction or that uh, presentation or you know uh, the output or interpretation is. So it's a great way to uh, immerse students in this interaction and communication that they would need to be proficient uh, in this case in English. So I think it's a very a unique and interesting assessment approach to incorporate in your classes. Yeah, and that being said, we do have, uh, much like we have the more traditional vocabulary list and grammar sections, we also include um, those more traditional assessments alongside the IPA. Um, so one great thing about these two is that um, not all of them, but many are auto graded. So that just saves you a lot of time. Um, and there, um, in addition to those two assessments that will be mostly multiple choice, fill in the blank sort of routine way of assessing the skills. We also have this free write activity at the, at the end, which, you know, after reading all of these stories um, and, you know, doing all of this work with the language, you give your students a chance to write something of their own. You give them a few prompts, but really they can write anything they want and you can use that as an assessment at the end um, alongside the more traditional ones if you like. Yeah, another mm -hmm. great thing about the traditional assessment in terms of like protection. So the free write is the rubrics that you have to assess their production which are already made, uh, but they are also fully editable. So teachers can add their own rubrics if they would like to. Um, and uh, it's a great guide to see um, and to see where your students are at. Um, I think um, understanding that if you use a CI approach, we are looking at effective communication versus perfect communication, <laughs> like perfect grammar mm -hmm. uses in, you know, to make it even clearer because um, normally if we just look at the grammar, a grammar-based approach, we're looking at correctly formed uh, sentences versus mm -hmm. CI looks at effective communication. So if students were able to effectively get their message across. Yeah, that's a great point. <clears throat> um, moving on to this next point, so if you have never used VOSIS before, you might not be aware that we do have a fully editable um, program here. So anytime you see, you know, the activities that follow a story, you might say to yourself, this isn't enough practice for my students. They need a little bit more to help them along with this. You can add your own page. You can add additional questions onto, um, onto any of the existing activities. Um, like Lorena said, you can even um, change the rubrics to fit your own needs. You can edit those. Um, there's really no um, limit to what you can do with the editor. Anything that we've created here, uh, you can do as well. Um, so it's just a really great tool. Um, you wanna to talk a little bit about the assignment 
uh, tools that we have as well, the, the grading yeah. and such. I think the, the assignment mm -hmm. tool is a great way to create personalized learning because uh, when you use the assignment tool, you can decide whether you want to assign uh, an activity or a set of activities to your entire class or if you know that there are some students that need extra practice or that they need a specific activity they need to work on, you can only assign those activities to those students. And uh, it's a great way to make sure like students that need extra practice, they get it. And whenever they finish, they can continue practicing and also to cater for other types of learning styles because some of them might be, you know, different uh, learners like visual learners, um, kinetic learners, you know, you, so you can really cater to any of your students' needs by assigning different activities. You can combine, of course, if you know that some of your students need an extra activity that needs, you know, more visuals to get or to acquire specific um, vocabulary or expressions, you can, copy the same, let's say, activity, but add pictures to the, the activities so your students can associate those pictures to the new expressions and assign those activities only to those students who need it. So actually, I, I enjoy these two tools because it allows for creation. And like you said, Hannah, there is no limit as to what you can create. Uh, and it's good. I have fun with the editor tool. <laughs> I really enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's important to have fun. You can, you know, one thing that we've talked about in past webinars for our storyscape is, you know, changing the names, the, the character names in the story or changing it to a Mad Libs, something ridiculous for your students to have fun with. So there's all sorts of things that you could do with the editor. Um, so I think that is the main overview of our storyscape. Lorena, is there anything else you wanted to add before we end today? Um, I would just like to add that uh, using a story-based approach um, and materials based on stories is something that can really transform your lessons. And uh, I am actually using our storyscape with my students and we really enjoy it. And, uh, it's amazing the different kind of connections that they can make based on one story, the different types of stories they can tell that relate to that specific story. And it builds like, you know, communication, but at the same time, confidence and also students feel, let's say, not as stressed to share, you know, those stories or to relate to a character. So I think using stories is a really great tool for your classes. So we really hope that you can incorporate it. And of course you can sign up for a complimentary teacher access for one year, enjoy the materials projected with your classes. And if you do have any questions, of course, you can send us an email at EFL at storyscape.com. And we hope to hear from you. Yeah, uh, we're very excited to introduce this to teachers in the United States. Um, because we know that there is, you know, a big need for more effective English um, materials. I, um, even at BOSIS, it feels like it has been often put aside for other languages, but English learning is so important for, you know, the, the well-being and development for students who, you know, they might come to the US to live or just for a short while, but both, in both cases, they need the, that extra help to, to um, either live or visit um, here. Um, so we hope that this will be useful for, um, for any teachers in the US with lots of Spanish speaking students. Um, and we thank you for tuning into our presentation tonight. Um, and as always, you can email us with any questions about it. So thank yeah. you very much. We show you, we'll show you around. You can always <laughs> schedule a walkthrough and uh, we will be very happy to show you how the platform works, answer any questions 
or help you find the best tool and the materials that can help your specific needs, you know, and your class. So we, you know, I teach Spanish speaking students. So I can definitely provide some ideas and help in how different ways you can incorporate the materials. So we hope you can contact us and we'll be happy to, to assess you. I mean, sorry, to assist you and uh, <laughs> <laughs> to assist you and show you around our platform. Awesome. Thank you so much um, and have a good night, everyone. Thank you for coming. Goodbye. Bye.